going to be a good Friday today because today we have GSL Codes Group C coming at you guys. Some more Terran versus Protoss action. And uh, yesterday we saw five back to back TVPs. We didn't get to see any PVPs, no TVT. See if today ends up being the same case. I hope, actually, that we do get to see some mirror matchups. I know everybody loves that PVT <laughs> matchup, but some variety would be good. Yeah, you know? yeah. Uh, we did see a lot of variety yesterday in Phoenix play being kind of the new yeah. meta for uh, how some of these Protoss players were approaching the matchup. Um, as the group went on, though, we saw it kind of fall back towards normal robotics-oriented yeah. play, going to that late-game Colossus play. And Innovation actually played so well. Actually, as you can see, he did get out in second place uh, down there. Um, to be our second Terran along with Innovation. And yeah. uh, SOS and Effort also advancing. But he played some great late game TVP, some of the best we've ever seen. Yeah, Kira as well. Both of those guys really shining in that group. And a lot of people saying, you know, Terran may be having trouble against Protoss, but in that group, they're tuning the tables. Well, they're showing I mean, some really look, good games. Look, look down there, there's two. <laughs> there's there's twice as many Terrans advancing so far as their Protoss. So many obviously, Terran is really overpowered. Terran, we, we may need to be taking a look at that Widow Mind change. Maybe it was a bit too much. Um, but obviously, these two Terran players are really good. Cure, not as well known as Innovation, but still obviously still up playing there. really well. Uh, as got well. got out of his group in first place. Uh, you know, one of our easier groups. A lot of people might argue, uh, but I mean, Paralyzed was in the round of eight last season, so that's uh, that's pretty impressive. And you know, today we've got Maru, the Marine Prince. He's playing. And I think yeah. everyone is expecting him to get out of the group in first place. Like no doubts about it. I'm not doubting it either. Actually, if if I had to make one prediction today, I would say probably Maru first. You know, I, I feel like those three guys are pretty close together, but then Maru's like a small step above, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. So, just to be perfectly honest, I'd probably give that one tomorrow. <laughs> All right, now we're going to be hearing from our players, just like yesterday, doing a little bit of interview action here with Yuri. Always love that interview action. Love that interview action, man. So we're going to be talking to Maru first. How have you been doing? 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 How have you 제가 몸살 기운이 있어가지고. 어 이렇게 GSL 할때 몸살 기운이 항상 <웃음> 따라다니는지 모르겠네요. 저희는 조성주 선수 좋아하는데 왜 계속 이렇게 몸살이 걸릴까 모르겠습니다. 자 지난 시즌에는 이 31강의 테란이 uh, 3명밖에 못 올라왔는데 이번에는 더 많이 올라왔어요. 어떠세요? Even he was a little bit sick. Uh, yeah, a bit sick, right? Like, yeah. 아니라서 좀 별로 안 좋은 것 같아요. 아, 조성주 선수에게는 테란이 늘어난 게 오히려 안 좋다 말씀을 해주셨습니다. 어, 사실 이번 시즌 yeah. 조성주 선수가 조금은 더 인터뷰를 해줄까 기대하고 있습니다. 그런데 저희가 이 진에어 그린닉스의 프로토스 김모 씨에게 저희가 제보를 받았는데 숙소에서 이병열 선수와 너가 더 인터뷰 못한다 서로 이렇게 싸우신다고요. 서로 이병렬 선수와 인터뷰 너가 더 못한다 이렇게 싸우신다고 들었거든요. 사실인가요? 자, 이번 시즌은 조성주 선수의 입담도 화려해졌으면 좋겠습니다. 이번에 조 지명식이 있거든요. 저번 조 지명식에서 원희석 선수가 도발하니까 냉큼 선택을 하셨습니다. 만약에 원희석 선수가 또 선택한다고 해도 선택하실 건가요? Oh, about, um, 네, 그럴 것 같아요. Picking, oh, something that Parting picked in the group stage, I believe. 16강 조 지명식에 uh, 갈지 I 기대가 되는데요. 16강 가고, 16강 지지 가능할지 각오 들려주시죠. That's really quiet for us, like it is for you guys, I'm sure as well. 테란이 많은 만큼 저도 꼭 올라가도록 하겠습니다. 네, 알겠습니다. <laughs> so he's just going to try his hardest to uh, advance to the next round. They're pretty, pretty curt as uh, usual, Maru. Yeah, that's like the basic Maru interview. You're not going to get much out of him. He's more suited to be better at playing Starcraft rather than uh, interviews. Yeah, loves to do with his, his uh, shoes off too, man. Yeah. So now we're going to have a push. 자, 코데스는 처음이십니다. 소감이 어떠세요? Uh, it's your first time in Kodas. How do you feel? 나대가지고 이번엔 좀 조심조심 
해서 올라가려고 해봤어요. I think he said he's going to be really careful. 선배 김정우 선수가 이변을 만들면서 16강 진출을 했습니다. 사실 오전 6km 올라갔는데 이렇게 올라오자마자 바로 오셨거든요. 김정우 선수 혹시 질투하거나 시기하지 않으시던가요? 어, I don't know which player he was referring to. 제 생각은 잘안 하는 편이라서. 아 그런가요? 지금 숙소에서 김정우 선수는 어때요? 그냥 평소랑 똑같이 열심히 연습하고 어, 있어요. 아 그렇군요. 자 현재 CJ 투스에서 yeah, 이렇게 처음 올라온 선수들이 많습니다. 서로 긍정적인 자극이 되나요? Yeah. 음, 조금밖에 없어가지고 그냥 <웃음> 뭉쳐서 그냥 화이팅 화이팅 하는 거죠. 아 그렇군요. 자 제주도 토박이어서 감귤 토스라는 별명이 있다고 들었습니다. 사실 굉장히 동질감을 느끼거든요 그 별명에. 저도 이 귤과 관련된 별명이 아주 많기 때문에. 참 친근한 별명이에요. 집에는 주로 매일 가서 내려가긴 하는데. Brennan's like on the case of trying to listen so hard. 최대한 GSL 뽕 빼고 내려가도록 하려고. 아 그렇군요. 집에서 가족들의 응원을 받고 계신가요? 네, 항상 응원해 주시고 좀만 더 높게 가다라고. So as you said, parents are cheering for you. 네, 자못 보는 만큼 가족들에게 좋은 소식으로 보답을 해드려야 할것 같습니다. 자 마지막으로 오늘 각오 들어보겠습니다. Story, I guess, for his parents. So shaky is like kind of hard to explain in English, but 어제는 프로토스들이 많이 깨졌지만 저는 오늘 그걸 바꿔놓도록 하겠습니다. 네, 알겠습니다. 과연 바꿔놓을 수 있을지 오늘 기대해 보겠습니다. 오늘 활약 기대해 보겠습니다. 감사합니다. 네. So, 자, 세 번째로 나서는 선수는요. 어, 제가 활동하는 so 시즌 동안에 안 계셨군요. 오늘 새 시즌 만에 돌아온 삼성 갤럭시 칸의 테란 이 김기현 선수 so 만나보겠습니다. 안녕하세요. 네, 안녕하세요. 네, 새 시즌 만에 돌아오셨습니다. 소감이 어떠세요? So new season, how do you feel? 그동안 너무 못했던 게 아쉬워서 이번 시즌에는 그 아쉬움을 꼭 날릴 수 있도록 그 정도 성적을 내야 될것 같아요. 네, 코드 A 때 저그전을 못해서 참 아쉽다 말씀을 하셨는데 어떻게 또 저그가 없네요. 실망하셨나요? 어, 제가 그때 끝나고 나서 인터뷰에서 뭐라고 좀 했더니 오히려 더 저가 안 좋게 걸린 것 같아요. 저희가 일부러 그러진 않았을 겁니다. 그래서 네, 그렇게. 쳤겠지만 이제 <웃음> 끝나고 이제 아무 말도 안 하려고 그래요. 네. And something about his previous interview from something else. I can't quite catch the question, but he was going to do an interview like that. 그래도 그때 이 저그를 상대로 했을 때 자신에게 당해서 마르게 무너지는 선수, 재밌게 무너지는 선수가 좋다 이렇게 말씀하셨는데 저그는 비록 없지만 이번 조에서 재밌을 것 같은 상대 있나요? 어 제가 아직 공식전이 없는데 오늘. 네, 꼭 만나보고 싶어요. Um, 어, 조성주 선수와 꼭 만나보고 싶다. 과연 그 다음 이어질까요? Really 자, 코데이에서 멋지게 포부를 밝혀주신 만큼 이번 시즌 기대하고 계신 분들이 아주 많습니다. 자, 테란 유저분들에게 오늘 각오 한 말씀 해주시죠. So you're back after three seasons. Say some words to your fans and to Terran. 꼭 테란들 중에서 제일 좋은 선수들 될수 있도록 하겠습니다. 네, 과연 어. 얼마나 멋진 모습을 보여줄지 기대해 보겠습니다. 오늘 오늘 기대해 보세요. 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 오늘 오늘 기대 Uh, last season, I was eliminated pretty early, and he feels pretty disappointed about his performance. But this season, he's feeling like you know he's going to try to make it as far as he can. Says I know it's pretty late to congratulate you, but you did win MLG. But in the final, you met Terran, so you defeated Terran, and your first opponent is a Terran. So you should be confident, right? 그냥 이제 코드 S니까 모든 상대가 어려워요. 오늘 조에 테란이 두분 계신데 조표선을 어떠세요? 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 오늘
자, 그때 오늘 그 모습 봤으면 좋겠다 그런 생각을 so 했었거든요. 오늘 uh, 경기 자신 있으신지 각오 들어볼게요. Uh, you were impressed by your your game sense and you were um 운이 따라줘야 you, were, you had a big smile, you know, you were feel confident. You must feel confident today as well. 가끔 and, uh, 방송 때더잘 풀릴 때가 uh, 있기 때문에 feels like, you know, he's going to need to come back to the next round. <웃음> 정말 솔직한 답변을 해 주셨습니다. 자, 오늘 조성호 선수 I mean, sometimes when he's playing in televised matches, uh, he can't really play the way he wants. 자, 이렇게 해서 오늘 시조에 나서는 good luck and he says thank you. 만나봤습니다. 이어서 여러분들을 위해 준비한 이벤트 소개해 드리겠습니다. That's going to be uh, the end of our interview for today, but let's talk about our event. Yeah, I'll go right into this event. Guys, we have a new GSL coin system. If you come down to the GSL and participate in events and studio attendance, you can earn GSL coins, which will be exchanged for, you know, season giveaways and stuff like this. If you come down to the studio, you get one coin, especially if you come down to the first game, the opening game, you get two coins. Yeah. And uh, if you get a tier sign, Appearance on camera, you will also get two coins. So exactly. So you want to be here early, and you want to make some fan signs. Make some fan signs. Um, I get some coins. Maybe uh, one of these days when uh, I got, you know, I'm on my off day, I'll come down here, cast. Oh, gotta here, get those coins. Get man. some. Get a sign. Get some coins. I'll be there for the first game. You know. Uh, we've also got the Aces Day coming up on 27th to 29th. No details have been announced yet, but it's gonna be a big fan uh, party. This sort of event there that Aces is hosting. Now we've got our four players, Maru, Hush, Reality, and Trap. They're There's all on the guys. box. They're on the box, man. They're in the booth, so they're ready to go here. Yeah, it all set up so they face each other here. How do you feel about, like, you know, these, these first matches, Maru versus Hush, I'd probably give that one to Maru, but then that second one, I feel like it could go either way, but I feel like if Hush drops down, and Trap drops down, it's not looking that good for Trap because yeah. Hush is like this PvP monster. Exactly. This is a, one of those groups that's really weird because if Hush has to play only PvTs, I don't really like his chances as much, but if he has to play uh, against Trap, that's almost like a guaranteed win for him. Like, his cross versus cross is so incredibly good. Yeah. Uh, that's what he's most known for. Yeah, he's like the one player out of this whole group that I look at him, and it's it's like his two other matchups are just like on a similar level, but then that PvP, there's like a, a giant bar like on a data graph that goes way up, and I'm like, whoa, that's weird, you know? Something to mention here for Hush, so... Just keep that in mind, guys. If he does go up against Traps, should be interesting for him. Probably favoring that matchup. Exactly. So... Players are ready in the lobby now. And uh, just getting things warmed up here, making sure that everything is set up correctly. Take a look at Maru, the Marine Prince, the best Terran in the world. Yeah, if you guys just look at his records, you can see in WCS records, really, really good. 70%, 61.5% in sets as well. Versus Protoss as well, really, really strong. 9 and 4, 21 and 16. Yeah. And this guy needs no introduction. If you followed StarCraft 2 for the past two years, or even about last one year, you know a lot about this guy. This guy is very talented, shot up out of nowhere. Was once known as the cheesiest player on the yeah. ladder. <laughs> uh, and, you know, when you think about that, it's no wonder why his two barracks proxies are so strong. It's, it's a good build. He's practiced it a lot in the past. And uh, once he got that macro style, practiced as well. He was he just turned into this amazing player. Yeah. Uh, he's very, very um, you know, well versed in macro, but no matter what, like he will get to that stage through aggression. Like he's a very aggressive player. Like his uh you know, his instructor, his teacher Marine King once was. Now Hush, 174th in WCS rankings. And WCS points he doesn't have a lot to be frank. And also he doesn't have a lot of matches played outside of Pro League as you can see his four and two in sets. And he's 0-1 versus Terra in all the recorded matches we have for these stats. Not a whole lot of play him for him televised here in this matchup, but in PvP, he's really good. So if he does end up facing against Trap here, I think it's going to look good for him. But having to face off against Maru first, man. Deadwing is the map. It's a pretty good map for Protoss here. Yeah, especially if we see that Phoenix style once again. It was, it was looking really good yesterday for the Protosses we had in that group. I wonder if Hush will play similarly to the cross we saw yesterday. I'm really curious about that. Um, keep in mind that we're almost certainly going to see Outboxer if this goes to a third game. Mario will definitely... Oh, right, Outboxer's not in the pool. I'm like, like we're going to see Outboxer, right? <laughs> no, 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 that's not in the pool. Mario wishes it was in the pool. No, I, got, like, I was like, I'm getting hyped for to see Mario and Outboxer again. Yes! 
No, we will not see Outboxer. It's not in the pool. I'm super excited. Sorry, I'm in pro league mode, guys. Finals are tomorrow. Get hyped. Well, um, maybe he picks Overgrowth or something, another two-player map that's not the biggest rush distance is. Would not be surprised. I think it would be a really good choice to substitute that one. All right, guys. Game number one, Morrow versus Hush here in Group C. Up here in the top left in the red, the Terran player. He is... Gene Green Wings, Maru. This guy is a badass. Yes, he is. And down here in the pink. CJ Tooth Hush. I guess he's rolling with the pink today. Interesting color choice. I like it. Stands out on the main map really easily. Yeah. A lot of people say, you know, it's a girl color. I was actually reading a Korean comic recently that was going into that. Did not finish the comic. It was not the most interesting thing in the world. But uh, for me, the pink color, you know, it can represent, you know, that feminine femininity or, you know, like being a girl or something. But, you, right, know, guys, but you know, guys who wear pink stuff as well, it's, it's totally fine. You know what I think about pink actually is it imbues a lot of confidence because I love that cat, by the way. Um, because if you are wearing pink, um, even as a girl, you know, there's, there's, you know, a lot of ideas and associations with the color. And if you're just like, oh, I'm just going to wear pink, I don't care what anybody thinks, you can do that as a girl or a guy, dye your hair pink. Um, I probably wouldn't do that, but I mean, you yeah. know, you could. I know, I know other people in the past have done this. Tasteless has done this. Uh, you know, some people dyed their hair pink. I've considered it a few times. I just don't think it would look good on me. Um, well, you know, if you wear pink, it's confidence. We have yeah. a CC first tomorrow, by the way, and that's confidence. That is confidence. One thing I do not want to see is hot pink. Don't do, like, hot pink hair. I, I like the pink that we have here for StarCraft, this pink that we have on the map, but hot pink is going a little too far. A little too far? Yeah, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say it's that good. What about that, that pinkish color? That's, like, more that's, red, I guess. That's red, yeah. <laughs> God, I don't know. I can't see colors. Don't do now. this to me again, Wolf. I mean, like, there's a very clear difference on this screen between the red and the pink, but that one I just wasn't so sure. Yeah. That's like lipstick pink or something. Or red. Oh, see? Now, now it's getting to see? me. Like, what see? have you done? Well, you know, for those of you guys wondering, uh, Wolf is slightly colorblind, like, very yeah. slightly. Um, he once thought Facebook was purple. Sometimes it did I happen. Yeah, yeah, sometimes I think that icon is purple. So there's the cancel on the Zealot, so you can drop his Nexus. We are cross spawns, not vertical. Yeah. Horizontal spawns have been removed from this map. Uh, before Code S started, so all these players are practicing that. We saw just uh, one game at a parting. He was playing against a Zerg player. I forget who it was. It was in Pro League, and uh, it was pretty one-sided, to say the least. It yeah. was like it was pretty funny. Parting was like laughing to himself the entire time. He just did an immortal rush, and well, yeah, it was. It was. Um, he like walled at the second uh, ramp, and it was, it was just not really fair. The map is changed for the better. Um, yeah. I liked the uh, I liked it for just how unfair it was because sometimes that can be really exciting. This is a really cool scout because he's able to identify everything with this. Okay, he's able to say, okay, you have two barracks in your main base. You've got a CC down here. You got one Raper. He doesn't know about the third barracks that's coming up right now. Um, that's the only thing he doesn't know. But he saves the probe. Wait, going back to your to what you were talking about. Um, I always love when there's a map like this, somewhat a way station that's such a gamble map where you're yeah. like, we could play a crazy long game here or we could play a rush game. And if I want to play the rush game and hope I get that, I'm going to be taking a big risk here. So players don't usually pick it, but sometimes you see that bold pick and they get the close spawns. And it's like, ah, ha, ha, you know. Um, obviously at a professional level um, from luck is of a standpoint, yeah. I don't really like that. But for me, like as a spectator, I always enjoyed that um, It was just interesting. Moment. It was different from other maps in that in that way. So. Got the blood flowing. Yeah. I mean, I actually am a, a big hater of four-player maps. Yeah, I, you get me on that all day. Oh, right, ooh, losing a lot of hit points on that stalker. But you weren't the biggest fan of Frost. Had that here. No, for a while. I really didn't like it. Um, just because I feel like with scouting, there's just way too much to chance. Um, sometimes you just your opponent gets lucky and scouts you first. You don't scout him, and then it's just not. It's just not fair. And there's no way to intelligently scout the right direction. Like it's, 
33.3% chance where your opponent's just won every time. There's no like smart way to like, there's no game theory here on yeah. like how you can figure out how to scout better. It's just it's, actually You, you feel luck. like it's like a map that takes skill away and adds in more luck. And in that sense, you don't like it as a map. Yeah, well, it's just so fundamental, the scouting information. Like on this map is now a three player map, essentially. You know exactly, you know, even if you scout late, you can see something, which is what happened here. So it was, it was pretty fine. He gets to see the CC first, this probe saves it and everything. Poking around with these Stalkers now, the Marine move out has commenced. Maru, uh, you know, not yet aware exactly what uh, Hush is doing, but seeing those Stalkers knows that his pressure is going to be pretty tough to pull off here. Bay's already done, so we're going to see Colossae popping out in a second. The two gates are added. It's a very safe transition here into Robotics play. No Stargate today, not yet. Uh, this Protoss. And yeah. Stalkers on the secondary ramp here. Yeah, I think Hush should be totally fine. I mean, given the map, it's it's pretty much the longest distance we have in the pool. It's cross spawns on Deadwing, so going for a type of rush like this, you're just trying to put on the pressure, and I think Hush should be fine. He's got that Mothership core back at home, and as long as he goes for that Nexus Cannon and push away these units before they get any damage done, should be okay. But Maru's going to come in here for some damage. He picks off one Stalker already, and he's going for the probes. Good force field there. Nice targeting on the uh, Marauder, by the way, on that Nexus Cannon. Ooh, another nice force field there. But gonna maybe support. lose that mothership core. Yeah. An expensive trade here for Maru, but I would say overall it was worth it to get that mothership core, kill the stalker that he got, and also eliminate those probes plus the lost mining time. He's now ahead in harvesters plus the mules he's got. Pretty good place for Maru right now. Yeah, I'd say so as well. I mean, he did go for an aggressive rush, so his tech will be a little bit late comparatively, but he should be okay. He's got a lot of time with this map. Yeah. Just working on these uh, debris over here so we can take a third base. The third that you can take on the secondary ramp is kind of like a three, a free third, or free fourth, I guess I should say, if you can get that third up after the rocks. So now what could this be for? This screams something is hidden. Uh, and I don't know what that would be. It could potentially be a Dark Shrine, but he doesn't have a Twilight Council yet. Um, I don't think he's going to hide like forges over there. It could just be for spotting drops, but he keeps the probe over there. I wonder if we'll see, like, Phoenix is actually uh, hitting Stargates after he gets the six gases up on that third base. He can afford that. That would be so interesting, actually. But we, it's... Do, we do have a Twilight Council coming down on the main base. Yeah. And with no forge, no upgrades that I see just yet, I mean... Only time can tell, or will tell, as the saying goes. Something like that. So we got Hush moving out a little bit here. Just going out to that watchtower, getting control, and moving his army back. Just wants to have some vision of the map first. Yeah, I mean, the army that Maru has made here is so difficult to pressure with at cross spawns on this map. This is not what you would have liked, especially according to Maru's style. You know, imagine how much faster he could have done damage had he you know, been at closer spawns with that early pressure he put on. Now seeing his first drops across the map, there are already plenty of units at home. Colossae out with range. That probe that made the pylon did move, actually away from it and is stationed in another location. I think he's actually just using this as a spot for drops, I guess. All yeah, right. I mean, that's what it's looking like so far. I mean, nothing else dropped over there. He does start to blink at that Twilight Council, so no Dark Shrine at the pylon for now. Scan goes down and he sees three Colossi. Fourth one is popping out and range is done, so does not want to attack into that directly. He's going to try to split up his units here and drop somewhere. Now, the observer placement here very nice by Hush. He's going to be able to see all of this. Um, there's something actually, there was some sort of chase going to the top middle of the map. I think a probe was also going around there to check for drops, did get killed. So we've got a few medevacs coming down here now. 1-1 one, one about to be finished for Maru. The forge is just now starting, so upgrade is, uh, you know, again, very in favor of the Terran. And uh, no upgrades whatsoever for Hush. We got our upgrade meter back today, by the way. It was gone yesterday. It's back now. All right, here we go. Getting some probes over here at the natural. It may be able to snipe some tech here. Nah, not quite enough units. Nah, with that one Colossi in the back, you should be totally fine. Look at this. There's not enough units at the front to pressure against the three Colossi that are waiting. So Maru is going to have to back off. Not too much damage done besides the probes that were pulled from that mineral line at the one, natural. 1-1 one, one just now started. Um, and just to point out further, what I was talking about earlier, if you check below the player name under the APM, you can actually see where the upgrades are at all times, so that's really cool. to be able to monitor where the player's upgrades are at all times, even without having the production tab or the G tab open. Um, I don't think it will account for things like Blink or Warp Gear Research, uh, the other upgrade tab would show, but just attack and armor. 
Um, so that's really important to keep an eye on. As we have seen in Korea right now, Poros players are actually favoring earlier Colossi rather than the upgrades. So we usually see Terrans ahead in upgrades throughout the mid-game, which is kind of a switch from what we saw in years past. Usually yep. the Terran players getting upgrades a little bit slower because of Chrono Boost. It's an interesting style. It makes you very it makes you very safe. When you have this many Colossi, you're so safe to these early kind of rushes, these mid-game rushes. Even these drops here, he's going to drop down some Widow Mines, but he's already got Blink and two Colossi over to defend. It's not going to do too much damage. Yeah, uh, I mean, that actually killed, I think, like more Marauders than it killed anything else. That Colossus tanks a shot, but has so much uh, health, doesn't matter. <laughs> got to drop out of there. That's three Colossi now. Oh, he gets back in here, though. Maru, this is what he does. Man. He loves drop. Look at this. Another attack here at the third base. And an Exus Cannon could buy him some time, but he's going to need to get some units over there. And while this is happening, he's dropping in the main base. Keep an eye on that. You see that red little blob. There he is. Yep. This is going to stim and run in. He's multitasking like crazy. This is what Maru does. He almost took out that Nexus. He got it pretty low. Oh, he's going to get the Archive. No cancel. Ouch. And this base is in trouble. With the position on these units here, I don't think he's going to be able to save it. Even with the Colossus coming over, he focuses that. I think he should get it. Yeah, he's going to get that. And over here at the third base is under attack again. And the natural as well. He's constantly attacking three different locations. While micering at the front with the Widowmines as well. Going to take down those Zealots in the front. Now those Jesus. Colossi are all alone. This is Maru we're watching here. You can tell when you see this play. You wouldn't even have to see the names. This guy is all over this Protoss right now. I'm actually scared, man. I'm like, is this even <laughs> fair? Like, Well, as Protoss players were like, oh, no, oh, God. Mar needs to go into code X, man. This is the wrong place, dude. <laughs> All right, so the cannons are finally fully secured at the natural, making the defense there a little bit easier. Oops, left a Widowmine over there. Kills that assimilator unit. And, oh, too many stalkers here, but he is going to drop the natural, avoiding the cannons. He somehow finds a place at that natural drop while attacking the front. Are there enough units here for the front? Yeah. Yes, there are. Bit too many there. These medevacs actually should go down if he doesn't pull them. There they go. Kill a lot of probes there, and he's just keeping his army supply better as well every time he takes a trade like this. Now, Maru is at 2 1 versus the 1 1. He started plus 3 and this plus 2 armor, so with Chrono Boost, Hush can sort of close that gap, but it's going to take him a little while here. Meanwhile, there's the fourth base coming up for Maru. He's playing this very similarly to how we saw Innovation play yesterday. This harassing, you know, not a, a lot more than Innovation, but also just you know, using attacks to be aggressive and then uh, take a fourth. If you compare his play to Innovation's play, Innovation was attacking constantly by ground and always threatening an attack, threatening an engagement, and then yeah. pulling back, sometimes picking off a unit or two, but Maru is actually dropping mineral lines and dropping bases. Uh, just gets out. Here we got an Nexus Cannon and a bunch of Colossae as well, so that's going to be fine. But again, you know, it's it's getting harder for Maru to find an area because Hush is just so concentrated on this, and he's splitting up his units a little bit better as time goes on, so... I mean, he's done a lot of damage, though, so you can even look at the supplies. He's up 50 to supply right now. He's almost taken down Nexus. Is he going to get this one as well? No. Not Pretty quite. close. Another drop or two would do it, though, if these units come out of position for any reason. He's got observers everywhere, too. Hush is, just because he knows it's coming doesn't mean that he can defend everything. Multitask of Maru is out of control in this game. He's making a heavy switch to Vikings right now. Um, or I shouldn't say switch, but he's just producing a lot of Vikings. Uh, he's not going to get that. No. But it's just so funny that he's able to find that tiny little lip there to drop his units. Like the one safe area in the base. That's what he found. The storm isn't ready yet. And he's making Archons right now as a result. He lost his Temple Archives earlier, which cost him a lot of gas, but also just, I mean, delayed everything. His transition is so difficult here. Now there are 14 Vikings to 5 Colossi with double starport production with reactors. He's actually just going to start taking straight up heavy engages here. And look at this, dropping in the main base. If any units pull back into there, his third base is screwed, man. Here we go. He moves back with some of his units a bit indecisive here. And Maru takes this opportunity. There's a good Viking volleys here on those Colossi. Mothership Core is way in the back. Taking a lot of damage are the Colossi. And really nice kiting out of Maru back onto the Widomines. And the Zealots taking a lot of damage. A good warp in there to defend. But again, Maru is not letting up. There's Colossi going down as we speak. Good blink there, actually, on the Stalkers. He eliminates a lot of the Vikings. Good kiting, though, again, by Maru. Back to the safety of those Widow Mines. And uh, the Nexus got low. He killed the Assimilator. Maru is on four bases, don't forget, during all of this. Kind of a giveaway Mothership Core there. Funny. Didn't get to see what happened there, but that's the third time that's gone down. Yeah, maybe just a mistake on his hotkeys. So usually like to keep the Mothership separately because of how it uh, 
how its priority goes with your skills. If you take it, like group any group, uh, group of units together, Protoss, Hotkey, and Militia Core will always be like the first one, so you can't storm or use Force Ult to Guardianship or whatever if you got the same Hotkey, so it's a bit annoying in that regard. So maybe he accidentally moved it, thinking he was moving something else, setting a rally or something. Yeah. Storm is ready. Storm is ready. How many Templar do he, does he have? Uh, I think he's like got like couple? six or so. Something like that. Maybe less, actually. Just two, two yeah. yeah. Just the two that were seen there at the third. The third that's being rebuilt here, but pressured constantly by Maru. Good blink there. Picks off a Marauder. But the Ghosts are in, and the drop is coming in. But Hush is ready this time, so he's not going to get much damage. Yeah, he's, he's just trying to force mistakes out of Hush. He's building a bank. He's probably going to be starting to add uh, a lot of Ghost Academy, or rather, a lot of uh, Barracks soon. Ooh, nice very storm nice there. storm goes on all of those Vikings. He just doesn't care. He's just eating it and doing the damage because once the Colossi are gone, his oh ground army is much better. It really is. He's got some reinforcements coming across the map as well. And look at this third base. Or this rather than natural. It's taking so much damage. All those probes have to walk away. This army is flimsy compared to Maru's. This is another Archon. This base is dead. And goodbye, Nexus. Third base is under so much pressure. GG. GG's out. Maru, man, he like opened Hush like a present or something. <laughs> <laughs> he like slowly took the bows apart and everything and like ripped open the paper as well, like very slowly. Never at one point in this game, besides with those two stalkers in the early game, did Hush ever have any move out potential or anything to do. Like he was just constantly, he was like a, a guy crouching in a corner behind a shield. Yeah, pretty much. Like taking blow for blow, man. Maro's just sitting there with like two crossbows, like reloading and firing, reloading and firing into his face. This guy is relentless. He will just not stop attacking you. And he's so calm while he does it. He's just like sitting in the booth. His shoes are off, by the way, in case you guys are wondering. No doubt about it. He always plays with his shoes off. Hush was looking a little bit nervous in his interview. Um, we didn't get to hear too much about what he was saying because uh, we had some audio issues. But uh, he was kind of, um, I don't know, I, I just feel like he was looking a little bit stressed when it comes to playing against Maru and playing against these Terrans because, you know, his Protoss is Protoss is what he's known for. He does have one Protoss else in this group, but you know, he's going to be playing more PvP, PvTs than he is going to be PvPs. Yeah. Well, for him. if he goes down here, I'm sure he's going to be hoping that Trap loses as well because I'm sure he wants to play that matchup, but I don't know about that one. That's pretty close between Trap and Reality. The map pick here is Overgrowth for Hush. That was a map I was thinking maybe Maru would pick if he went down. Yeah, I almost feel like this may be a mistake. We'll talk a little bit more about that once we get into game number two. Maru 